Hi, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of the Cathode Ray Podcast. And my friend Steve and I, we welcome today Bob from Retro RGB is joining us for a live stream. How you doing, Bob? Excellent. Thank you very much for having me on. Good. And Steve, you're over there, mate. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing wonderful. Trying some new setup stuff here. And uh, it's so awesome to have Bob on here, uh, especially uh, with what we got going on today. But uh, it's kind of funny. When we were planning this this week's episode, Lewis and I were talking, you know, I, we, I was like, we need to put out a list of people that we want to have here on uh, the CRP with us. And of course, uh, now don't don't feel intimidated by this, Bob, but you were number two on the list because number <laughs> one, I mean, number one is Joe Rogan. So <laughs> we're still waiting on his agent to call us back. But I can't believe you're number back two to us yet. So we have we have you here. and We're thankful well, I'm glad to be here. I barely slept last night, which is why I look like a fucking train wreck. It's actually not not a hangover, shockingly enough. But yeah, it's cl close close to normal, close to normal. <laughs> so I got my coffee and my mug, and now I'm just kind of waking up with you. But uh, I'm excited because I wanted to do this with Steve while I was there hanging out. But just the way the cards fell, it just wasn't working out. So we're basically going to be doing this as if I was hanging out, drinking a beer with him, except it's coffee. And, uh, you know, I barely slept last night. So <laughs> Right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to the LCD screen that Bob, uh, the LCD PVM that Bob uh, gave or loaned or donated or whatever it is, transmuted over to Steve. Uh, Steve has repaired it. And now we're going to do some lag testing uh, live on stream because why not? Why not do it live? So talk yeah, about the regular stuff. Let's... Talk about some shit and... Yeah, let's set this. The, first, we uh, mm. I want to set this up just a little bit. Where I want to know, Bob, but if you don't mind, like, where did you get this monitor? Or how did it come across to you? So, um, as you probably have seen, Greg from Laser Bear has made the LCD CRT cases for people that want to hook up, like you know, the Mister or something directly to it. And uh, one of the ideas that he'd been talking about for a while is maybe trying to do one that looks more like a PVM. So I said, well, hey. I've kind of wanted to review one of these things just for the hell of it. So why don't I review it and then send it to you for free or whatever if it works and that way you can 3D model it and or maybe I'll just take really good pictures for you or whatever you need to get it done. And he's just like, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So I looked on eBay and they're all pretty expensive and that one was 90 bucks and I had like scratches across the LCD screen and I was like, well, I don't even really care if it works. It says it works, but you know, that's uh, that's perfect. Even if the screen's all messed up, I can still lag test it and see what resolutions it accepts. And then it arrived and didn't even turn on. And I emailed the person and said, hey, you know, uh, is there anything I need to know about this? I tr tried turning it on, but nothing happened. And he didn't even respond. He just re refunded my money. So I was like, well, so I, I, I did a video, which was going to be an opening shot of my video where I take a camera and walk around a 14 inch CRT PVM and then walk around to the other side so that, like, then you see, like, it looks the same from the front, but then it's, like, this thick instead of the other one. I'll just give you the footage if you want. You can throw that in here if you're, you know, if you feel like being fancy. But uh, I was like, okay, cool. I got the footage shot. Now let me set up my camera, get my microphone, get, you know, get everything ready. And now let's, you know, do this live but pre recorded. And I hit record on the camera and I hit power on that and nothing. So that's nothing. when I was like, well, I'm bringing a truckload of shit down to Steve. So let me throw this on the pile and see if he wants it. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah so i just i was curious because um while i was working through this i was just i like to go online and just see what if there's anything really available um uh, as far as even like a video on it there's not really much on these i mean there's a couple of short videos that other people have made um so and i've never seen one in person and um so i mean i had no idea like you say about the resolution or anything but like you said, it didn't it didn't power on, and I didn't. Well, but the first thing I did, and the videos have already been released now. Actually, the second one will be out before this episode comes out, where you'll get to see um, it actually being repaired. So if everybody will be caught up on that. But um, yeah, I opened it up, and I was, of course, you know, and even in the first video, I didn't even look at the capacitors right away. I was like, I'm going to go through and troubleshoot this the right way, like if it's just. Uh, you know, it goes into a shop and you want a video like, oh, and I'm just sitting there checking all the fuses. There's a bunch of them in there. And then I got to those caps. And yeah, I could tell slightly coned. And uh, I don't know how this person said they tested it because those caps were like dead for a long time. Mm. The the ones that were yeah. bad and they were 
they were in the area of the power supply where you know it's towards the end where it's starting to get converted i think it's like it was like nine volts five volts and 12 volts dc and so it was going through those filter caps and all of them were shot um so you know i was able to replace them with some pretty good uh, replacements. It was surprising to me because they were Nishicon or no Rubic Rubicon caps, but they still were failed out. And then the then I finally went and watched a video that somebody else had done, and the same exact caps were bad in their fourteen. Do you think there's excess inch. heat around those, or just could be? Yeah. Bad. So that's what I was going to say. If you watch the video, I actually kind of talk about that. How if you were like redesigning this, it's funny. There's three fans in this monitor, and uh, it's two on the bottom and then one on the top but the corner that has all the failed capacitors is the one without a fan it's the one corner they left the fan out and um, there's a bunch of heat build up i'm guessing around there but that's where it failed so uh cool. it's either it's either like a design issue i think too maybe where the probably caps because it's just like those ones specifically fail out or the over excessive heat too so i don't know but yeah, we're here. I always ready. wonder in stuff like this if they, if they kind of, I don't want to say re didn't put the fan in on purpose, but they were after it was done, it was kind of like, eh, I think performs great, but those caps are going to be needed to be replaced every five years, and I could imagine some sales manager like, great, perfect, we'll send our techs. So it's like, uh, all right, <laughs> right, fine. techs, or you'll have a replacement plan lined up because this need is more. one of the i mean it's yeah. not the first lcd pvm it's one of the first so it's really and this i don't think we can underestimate the massive change that must have gone on in sony engineering sony r d or everyone's r d around this time that now they're making yeah it's a tv but it's a com really a completely different product yeah. and this is the really their first go at it even though it's you know the so, sony guys yeah just so you know this one is from february of 2006 so there were they were still making like A series BVMs that were CRTs in 2006 same time period. Hmm. So yeah, this is some of their I think I mean there's a there's a model that's a 1410 I've seen. I don't know if that's just a different has a different set of features or if it's actually a different uh, earlier model, but I couldn't imagine they were coming out too much earlier than, you know, a couple months I don't months think so. This. I'm pretty in sure I keep reading maybe. 2006 as the first. Mm. So well, cool. we'll um, yeah, after we got it fixed, we'll, just so everybody can kind of see, we got it set up. I've just been letting it run, obviously. Everybody knows the uh, PVM seller, Sonic 2, that is on every other CRT listing <laughs> for sale. But this, uh, it's just been running loops, LCD. It is in RGBS. So obviously this is 240p. And... Uh, I don't know. I mean, from the way I look at it, it, it looks pretty good for 240p. I don't notice any kind of jumpiness on the screen at all in 240p that you might see in some LCDs um, where if you put it in there, it doesn't really know how to interpret it. It only lists everything as 480i, just like the CRTs. Uh, yeah, I totally expected that. It's funny. It should just say 15 kilohertz or something, but... Yeah, so um, if you wouldn't mind holding up the Time Sleuth contraption -y thing that I sent you, uh, just to explain what we're doing to everybody here. So we got Time Sleuth, and then uh, the digital to analog converter that I sent with this is one of my favorites because it performs well, but it looks just like a cable. It doesn't look like a piece of equipment. So that is then plugged into a coupler into the HD15 Descart. Uh, so essentially, it's just taking HDMI to VGA, that adapter obviously doesn't pass audio, but we don't need audio for this. And if you're using something like a Tink 2X into a VGA monitor, just don't plug the audio into the Tink. Plug them directly into speakers. So that's a that's a very handy solution because that's all you need. Uh, and obviously, you know, oh, power I would, and I would love loop. one of those. Sorry, Bob. I would love one of those HD15 to Scott. I know they've been out of stock for a while. There are other so certainly other solutions out there, but to me, that was the most elegant and the, the yeah. sort of the most compact and easy. So I'm still hanging on for Castlemania to produce a few more when they can, of yeah. course. Now you could, of course, just get any cheap Xtron RGB interface that could combine and split sync any way you want. And they're oh, very cheap. Bob, America, great. Bob. You <laughs> live in the, the, the greatest land in the world, but we live over here where we don't get such cool deals and so forth. So 
No F yeah, times in if Europe. There, we got to come up with some other solution. If there was only some fat fuck that had a stack that could send one to you, just ask. Yeah, I mean, where <laughs> will we find them? And why won't they exercise? I don't know. All these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, in all seriousness, if you're on a budget and you, and you need one right away, grab those. But it's a box with a power supply and more cables. And like every electronics device, the caps may or may not be good in it. So that's why I just love the HD15 Discart. But it's not the only solution. You could do that a million other ways. True. Okay, so Steve, we got the yeah. time sleuth. Now it's already yeah. programmed. Uh, yeah, Bob, Bob did all this for one. me. Bob was That's nice enough thing. to send this to me, and because uh, I saw it, and he was like, "Oh, you need all these converters," and I'm like, "Well, this just looks like a c cable, and the actual time sleuth." I'm like, where? What? And so, yeah, this is. I mean, that is super awesome to just be able to plug that in and and do it on its own little thing here. So there's that, and then we've got right power, just power any for the time anything sleuth. like it's okay and that it's the... plugged into a wall. 100%. Jack. And the dial on the time sleuth, you should start out with it all the way to the left counterclockwise because okay. that's how I programmed it. Um, you could, uh, For anybody who's not aware of the time sleuth, you could program any order and any resolution up to a pretty high resolution. But I have it 240p, 480i, 480p, 720p, 1080p. Makes sense. Okay. So just go and, and then like where it says time sleuth all the way to the left. Correct. To start. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and oh, yeah. it's I I don't remember what setting I had the HD15 discard on, so if we get crazy sync issues, we'll just need to flip a switch. All right. All right. I'll unplug the uh, insurrection SCART cable, and then. Should I plug this? I guess I can just plug this in, and then the power. So what's that? Uh, is that a SCART to BNC breakout? Is it Steve? Yeah, that's all it is. It's. Mm -hmm. Because the back of this has BNC inputs that look very similar to a regular PVM. Yeah, it looks exactly like the, you know, uh, what's the one? Like a 14M2U, mm. like that exact build out. You got just it's BNC and then an S video. And there's no additional, um, you know. Oh, there's S video on it as yeah, well. Yeah, there's, there's S video on it. All right. So. Shows me that I haven't got around to watching Steve's video yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're we're starting here, and I've already Ooh. just plugged it in, and you're, you're right, it says 240p right there. I'll try to see if I can't maybe get it a little out of the way and maybe oh, lift it up here and uh, have everybody get a better view. And maybe I can even get a little closer here and... Oh, that's, that's great. I think we can see it. All right, good. So, and for anybody listening on audio, we'll we'll walk you through what we're seeing in the important parts. Right. So yeah, we're just we've got the time sleuth now hooked up, and then um, it. I mean, I just push it against the screen, right? It doesn't. Does it have to be pointing a certain direction? So do you see the uh, like the photodiode on the back of it? Right. Yeah. I, don't, I forgot if that's a photodiode, but whatever the fucking thing in the back. Make sure you put that up against uh, the upper left corner, at its highest point. And you might even go too far, and that's fine. And you can back it back up if you want. And the orientation of the time sleuth doesn't matter, so uh, it doesn't have to like read the label correctly. You can put okay. it up, down, sideways. So this is saying like, so that's getting a reading, right? When it's lit up solid like that, or um, you should try moving it down into the right a little bit just to okay. see. The there we go. Okay. So, so this is saying, goodness, around fifty, fifty-eight. Hmm. Right there? Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of lag. Dude, that's saying like 88. <laughs> so I was telling Lewis I couldn't really – I mean, I hadn't played much on it, and I didn't, but I didn't feel like I could notice. But, man, look at that. That's up there at the 80 level down there, 70, actually, 77 average. Oh, well, Lewis can come back. That's okay. Yeah, so, man, it's like, it's different. It seems like it's different in each spot, maybe, too. Is that normal? Yeah, because it's how the uh, how these monitors draw the signal. Um, like, if you were using a CRT, it would be zero, you know, you'd probably get, like, a point zero 
something on the top just because of overscan. Then in the bottom, it would be high 14s because, you know, the total time 16.5 to get back up. Right. So on LCD monitors, uh, and people argue with me about this, but I don't really give a fuck. Uh, I always just test in the upper left because it gives you a good baseline reading. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, yeah, you know, there might be variable latency. You know, it might buffer a couple of frames or something like that, but I think it's just a good idea. Uh, and especially with stuff like this, because if you stick it in the upper left and it gets 55, it doesn't really matter what the rest of the readings are. It's uh, very right. Yeah, I mean that's the that's that's insane to me. I mean how? And oh my goodness! And just think about this. How did I, I could I could not imagine trying to sell these compared to like CRTs? I was laughing with Lewis. I was like, could you imagine being walking into a Sony tech room with? And they're like, oh, well, let me go get the guys who really work on this stuff from our tech department. And then you're trying to pitch them this thing to get rid of all the CRTs. I can tell you exactly, I can tell you exactly why. It would be it, the studios that were still doing deep um, calibration, color calibration of TV shows and movies that are doing editing of movies. They were probably still running those A-series BVMs. But production houses that are going out and shooting on scene, on location seeing the weight difference and probably the cost difference they were probably like oh who cares give me the little one that's you know it's does it get a picture on screen cool we're done i'm out like yeah so that's so you're probably viewing this one uh yeah on site you don't have to haul it uh whole screens around and stuff like that um because yeah then it becomes it's a video environment so where in a video environment a video production environment do we need low lag uh you don't uh, maybe really, some yeah. syncing issues right. yeah i'm trying to think maybe they got a sync but it's really just the screen audios in a professional environment it's probably being processed by a completely other yeah. different system so what well, does it matter and steve that um does become it's a bit consistent with my results when i the the forgotten footage that i have of the oled pvm uh bob i i took it a, an oled pvm home did some footage but I did it just before the accident. So I haven't got around to revisiting uh, that. And I took terrible B-roll. Oh, I don't know how to take B-roll. I'm awful at it. So it's, it's I'm so thinking I'm, I'm going to get like a five-minute summary version out soon. I Soon, I keep telling Steve, soon. But <laughs> when I test it on composite, it's HDMI in, 1080p OLED PVM. The the HDMI input is like six milli, seven milliseconds, like, fast quick when you send it 1080p but i sent it composite and it was something like 50 60 70 i was using the variable lag box but it was yes. similar in results so the next time you're in my comment section and you read some twat saying that uh, i'm lying about needing a scaler just to sell my affiliate links which most of them don't have affiliate links on it anyway now you know that i'm actually not lying you tested it for yourself <laughs> most of these displays consumer or pro when you pump in composite video or any analog signal, it adds a lot of lag. And I don't know why, because there's no need to do that. But, you mm. know, it is the proof. The proof is right there, right? What there a, is no ice wall. Found. The earth is round and there is lag. So. <laughs> this, Yeah, this is like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm shocked there's so much lag in this kind of. But also, like you said, I mean, that's a great point to bring up. All you need to do then is go get your benefits person who's like, yeah, we had 25 back injuries over the last five years from people trying to be out in the field moving just pvms yeah. back and forth and then now we've got something that you could carry 10 of for the same weight you know yeah and again if something happens it's not as it's it, the cost i'm sure it, once you know these started getting cheaper it wasn't anywhere near the cost of manufacturing now, Steve, you um, that's only 240p and 480i. There's no 480p. There's no other. No, no, so we are going to do that next, actually. So if oh. Steve wouldn't mind putting that up in the corner, uh, so it's back, you know, um, where you were getting the top left measurement. I would All actually right. stick it back. Yeah, leave it at 240p. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, you could rotate it to the right so the wire is not in the uh, in oh, the way okay. of the thing. Yep. There we go. Okay. Right there we go. So you you have a reading. It's uh it's about fifty, right? It is like I mean it's yeah between it's like fifty eight, about. Okay. So just turn. Wow, you know that's such a delay that I could actually see the distinct difference between the LED on the time sleuth and the flashing on the screen. But yeah, it's um, yeah yeah yep. 
So mm. just turn the dial once to the right and see if the lag changes before ADI. It should not. It should be the same. No, it's looking, yeah, it's looking the same, 57. Mm. And let's see if it jumps up there to like 67. It's been doing 57. So yeah, that's a rolling buffer. Like uh, Mike Chi explained this really well in the last podcast I did with him. So I'm not going to try to, to fumble through that because I'll get it wrong. Uh, but if you flip it right one more time, let's see if it takes 31 kilohertz. It should. All of these should have. <laughs> bum, bum. Bum, bum. Whoa. It does bum, not say 15 kilohertz only LCD. Yeah, so that's wow. that's the uh, that's the big that's the big reveal here. I didn't actually reveal that in my second repair video because what I did was I hooked my Xbox up, you know, and then I was like, surely this thing will do at least 480p, right? So that's what I did. I, I went from standard to high to just 480p, and it went away. It still gave me audio, but no video signal. So that's the even bigger disappointment of this monitor is that it's only analog. <laughs> so, all right. So if anybody ends up with one of these for free or near free, still a, a small and thin great way to just test your mods, test a console, Hey, does this video work? Does composite work? Does, you know, RGB work? Uh, or if you have arcade tournaments or if you have anything like that, you you have an output. Or I guess even just regular retro gaming tournaments and you, you're able to split the output properly. You could just stick this thing up above for anybody who's also at the tournament to just watch what's going on because lag wouldn't matter. But it's not a gaming monitor at all no i think you're doing it more to send a message when you're at your event you're like look at me motherfuckers i got an lcd pvm up there i don't care about the yeah, lag look at there's, that there's everyone like, taking yeah. a double look like is that is that a water? there's no there's no uh there's really no yeah this isn't a gaming monitor i think that that's a great point though bob because you can still see how like an eight inch pvm or bvm that is crt has gotten to the point where if you have a good one of those they're worth three or four hundred dollars at least now but yeah if you get this and you just want it to be a bench test, it can still do 240p and 480i, and it can do RGB component and all the things that those other monitors can do. So it still accepts that signal. And so if you find one of these for cheap, it's actually good for that. Like, and it doesn't take up as much room. Does it do component, Steve? Sorry. It yeah, it'll do component. Yeah. Okay. It cool. definitely does so component. Two more um, questions for this thing then before, uh, you know, before, because there's not much more testing we'd want to yeah. do since we've already determined it's not for gaming. Um, first is, can you throw the 240p test suite on there? Yes. Give me one minute and I will. Can do that. Cool. Because uh, I, I would have been, and I know we all would have been interested in what would be the difference with progressive with the deinterlacing. Um, because, yeah, I found when, again, when I was running HDMI, into that OLED PVM, which is a much newer one. It's a 2011 model. When I ran 480i over HDMI, it was fine. It accepted that fine, and it didn't have any more lag than 480p. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. weirdly, even though there's huge lag in that device over composite, deinterlacing wasn't the cause of that. Their deinterlacer was very good. Right, right. Crazy, crazy to think of that. Yeah, let's go in here and see. Uh, so this is really just the equivalent of whatever your PVM, your your CRT PVM was at the time. They've made the LCD equivalent. No extra functionality, no nothing. But let's just quell the hype right here. Don't again, don't go running around saying this is like an awesome gaming monitor. <laughs> no. Well, who said that? Bob said that. Bob surely. Bob, uh, just, uh, I would never hey, say anything like I'm that. I'm glad we did this because I might have said something Bob. that's stupid. But no, it's uh, not. So, I mean... So, go what? into the test uh, and the drop shadow test. I forgot which one it was in. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Oh, checkerboard. Might be in the other page. It might be. Yeah, test patterns. No, it's in the other one. <laughs> they re he rearranged the menus recently. It's tough, I know, Steve. Menus. No, it's fine. I think they're in the right place. Is it place, the drop shadow? It's hard it. when you, there it is. Yeah, so okay. um, it's kind of hard for me Ooh. to see, but I usually drop that down uh, on the person's face right under the right eyeball, or I guess their left or right um, uh, other one, and then down on the cheek. So that a uh, little farther, perfect. So right there is the spot I choose because you see the contrast between everything else, and it makes it Holy easier moly. to see. Is that flickering, or is yeah. that just a solid 
object. Oh, I hit the screen. Not, hang on, sorry. I don't know how I'm we're gonna, ever going to see pull, this on camera pull, as well. Yeah, I'm going to pull it back. Wait, hang on. I, I don't think it's right. going to Somehow go. I got this B on here now. Okay, there <laughs> we go. Oh, my goodness. It just, okay. it looks crazy. I don't know. Uh, like, there is a weird almost pattern in it, and I don't know mm. if I can show it on here. Actually, I can kind of see it but in the middle of that But you see these lines? I've never yeah. seen yeah. this kind of almost weird line pattern that's behind the screen in there. Do you see how it's got it? It's like once every ten lines or something. So and is it flickering like it's going on and off, or is it like a still picture with weird lines on it? It, it looks like fuzzy RF more than – I would compare it to that more than like flickering. So it probably doesn't – it's probably not processing 240p correctly. Uh, however, it could be doing a whole bunch of other stuff. So, um, you know, while we've already determined this isn't a great um, – gaming monitor this might determine that it's also not great to test your mods because you might oh. be seeing interference on the screen that would just be that um, well, if you need quality I... video this isn't the solution really like you got to test your mods you got to see some high right. quality work does this console turn on perfect monitor for it but that's about <laughs> it <laughs> is this steve is this 240p or 480i in the the test suite right now 240p yeah it's 240p so can you try outputting 480i from the test suite does that change something um, what yeah Down alternate the right usually there. Whoop. There uh, i think you have to hit start to select between those two um i could be wrong though some of the options yeah, you know, maybe let's see here oh yeah under options or something options okay uh enable 480 my anything. all right there it is so that would so just something put it happen on. then yeah it just kind of like jerked and then and then came still. So I don't know what that... Uh... Sounds like a good Saturday night for me. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of the woods. <laughs> All right. Um, so, okay, drop test. Yes, we're going to oh, see sorry. whether that... Let's go back to the drop yeah, test. Yeah, so obviously if we've set it to 480i, it's going to look totally different. But if it looks exactly the same, I don't know, then that, that would be a good indication that it's processing it wrong. I okay, it. so I it's it's kind of you know it looks the same, but I'm not seeing like the RF fuzz. It, huh. Everything looks like stable. It's weird to explain, but there's no. I wonder if it really is processing 240p correctly. It's just such a slow refresh rate on the screen that it's blur blurring together. That might be a good point where it's not it's not catching it like really the this, right. this technology is not really that great at displaying it. Right, early LCD technology, it can't keep up. So every time it, you know, the the pattern turns black and then turns off and turns black, it blurs together because it's not able to turn it all the way off. So it, it could very well be processing it fine at 240p, and it's the LCD display itself that's screwing up. So the last thing I would do is set it back to 240p. Um, I you just afterwards leave it on the 240p test screen or or whatever, you know, pick and pick a background. Um, and then just go into the menu of the LCD and see if you see any um, any menu options in that PVM that that gives you a hint of you know processing modes or something like that. Yeah. They're, obviously, uh, they wouldn't say game mode, but you never know. Like maybe there's well, a low latency here. I can do this or something. Quick. Hmm. When I was testing the the OLED PVM, it wouldn't accept 240p over composite. Like just wouldn't see mm -hmm. it. But if I sent 480i over composite in the 240 test suite, it would work. Then I could switch to 240p, and it was fine. But you can't. I would. It couldn't start with 240p, for lack of a better term. Hmm. Yeah, I, I went through this menu a little bit, and there's just not nearly as much stuff in it. Um, let's see here. I'm not expecting anything, but you never know. Right. A friend of mine got me a medical grade LCD panel. Uh, it was touchscreen and everything like that, and he, you know, it was basically free. I just had to pay for you know like eighty bucks in shipping because it was thirty two inch or something like that. And I think it did accept all signals over, you know, kind of exactly like this. And my my question was, does it have an ultra low latency mode because it was used for you know medical stuff? And it didn't, so I ended up giving it to uh, my buddy Arturo, who I think used it exactly what i what i was just talking about bring it to a tournament prop it up on top of an arcade machine and that's what everybody was using who was standing too far back to see so yeah yeah that makes so was that one of like the uh the me that was a medical grade lcd like this 
Uh, or was that it... was like a 32 inch Barco monitor, I believe. Oh, okay. Which are all rebranded anyway, but um, but yeah, that was just it was one of those things where I had the opportunity to get one for free. All I had to pay for was shipping, and I was like, this is never going to work. But I would because Barco is very high end, isn't it? I know their projectors are like very expensive when I rent them for our theater shows, but I don't know much yeah. more about their screens. Yeah, I mean they're supposed to be, but you know, who knows. Yeah, I don't really. There's know always things. stories with companies like that. Like Runco never, never really made anything. Theirs were all rebrands, and uh, but they would add like ten grand to the sticker price. Yeah, it was yeah, it was crazy. There's a whole bunch of scams that used to happen back before the internet. What still happens? The hyperkin, the, the rebranding of things, with the controversies that you dealt with well, so well. I'm not trying to yeah, drag that, you back into that. That but. rebrand for a thirty dollar product is totally different than you have like a gorgeous five thousand dollar projector that's worth every penny if you're an enthusiast. That somebody else sticks their name on it and sells it for fourteen thousand nine ninety nine. Uh, oh. just to give their installers more of a margin. And then 2003, 2004 hits, people are looking up online that you can get those same things for, you know, for five grand and uh, they're losing their minds. So, <laughs> Yeah. So what do we found in the menu, Steve? I, I think pretty much nothing. There's like gamma settings, um, yeah. but nothing, nothing important. Safety markers. Um, it's really limited, actually. There's not, there's not a whole lot in there. So pretty much... What Bob just said is right, you know, playback monitor. I mean, if you wanted to have. If you got know, it for free. I've if you got it for free, for because like you said, you online. can't. You could get an HDMI display that would act better than this for something. I mean, you'd be better off getting the, the laser bear. You'd be better Absolutely. off doing something like that and slapping that on the side of your. Uh, I've thought about which my camera's too close to me or something. It's going crazy. Um I thought about that for, you know, like the Mr. Cade setting up, having a, a small display on the wall. And this would be cool to just go mount on the wall a couple feet away from it with straight HDMI into it if it did HDMI. <laughs> and if it wasn't, yeah. if it wasn't, uh, and like you say, it's not worth um, much more than getting it for, for free or just to have yeah. unless you want to have it like in your collection to go hey these are the pvms and this is like the way that historically they changed um yeah because i mean when i've when i was looking those up on ebay the average price is double a completed laser bear lcd crt kit and it's not a crt please check out the video it's you know i don't want to confuse anybody it's just an lcd monitor with a case that makes it look like a crt but it's very, very low latency, you know, less than uh, or about a millisecond or two or something like that. It looks great. There's a Mr. Mode designed for it. You could mess with the RetroTINK 5X and have it look pretty good. And for the price, like I know people that have bought that as a secondary monitor to read the chat while they're streaming. And oh, by the way, they could also plug it into their Mr. and use it as a dedicated Mr. monitor too. And uh, so that's not what this would be for i would say if you can get one for free cool but from a gaming perspective i would never spend any money by the oh shit i just realized i'm wearing the laser bear hoodie ah <laughs> this is yeah, not sponsored by laser bear yeah so, not sponsored by lasers or bears <laughs> chill <laughs> chill that was uh <laughs> that was pretty yeah that's pretty good explanation because i, I the uh again this yeah it's just it's not it, it, Thankfully, we don't have to invest more into it. This is kind of funny. I went to Walmart. I've been looking for a stand for this thing, right? And I'm like, so I'm going to the thrift shop looking for a crappy LCD monitor that has a 100 millimeter uh, pattern just to get something on it. And I was looking all over for like a print design to get, and I couldn't find anything. And then I finally went to Walmart, and they had like monitor stands. And even at 30 bucks, I was like, I don't even want to invest an additional 30 bucks <laughs> to buy a monitor stand for this thing till after we test it and know that it's actually usable. Otherwise, like you say, it's just it's something that I wouldn't normally set out um, out of everything. And especially like when you start adding more it's... money into it. I uh, mean, it's not yeah. like I did look at the prices online. Uh, right now and that there was one that recently sold for 150 dollars plus shipping um so that and if you're comparing that with modern lcd monitors you can go find you can go down down to any store just about and get a 24 inch that has lower latency hdmi monitor yes right off the shelf for less than that just go grab it and so um 
we sometimes can't let our excitement over Sony PVMs and how awesome they were for gaming in the CRT format. That's again, this proves they were never meant for gaming really originally, because that was not yeah. an emphasis at all to keep uh, going as technology progressed. Well, what we're doing there is we're comparing the best, like the end of the CRT technology, the very best of that technology the very peak of where that could possibly be pushed. And then all of a sudden, here's your LCD. It's the first one we ever made. It's all right. And having said that, because we're sitting back in 2021 and we're like, oh, the latency. Oh, it's just not good for gaming. We, everyone was losing their minds in 2006 over a flat screen. Yeah. That was the greatest <clears throat> thing in the world back then to have a flat screen. And it's just the way technology goes on. They're really... There isn't, as we've been talking about, many great uses for that because it's an early adopter technology, even if Sony blessed it and made it and, and touched it. Yeah, but you could completely and totally see its place, right? You just, mm. saw, <clears throat> you just saw how terrible the refresh rate was on the screen, so no one's using that to edit their movies. But if you're on site shooting a weekly TV show, especially one of those, like, you know, uh, you know live, like, um, you know, like recorded live on the street type of thing like having one of those is even in, way easier than holding an eight inch pvm you know crt pvm up because it's just those things are so light your all your cameras are sd anyway so they would go right in so i totally see the purpose just not for any of us it's certainly not 20 years later <laughs> no i wonder if that um uh, how to say i know in the age of flat panels that they certainly still have outside broadcast vans and I know we got a few here in Estonia. The local guys gave me a tour through a little while ago. I mean, amazing things. And but the, the difference that struck me when I, I looked through a modern outside broadcast van is it wasn't a million screens. Like an old school one uh, where I got most of my CRTs from, it's a wall of CRTs because all you can do is fill it out with whatever, 8, 9, 14 inch. There was yeah. the one that I got it from had a 20 inch, which is where I got my 20 inch from. The 20 inch in the middle is the master monitor. But when I was taking a tour through this modern broadcast van, I mean, what have you got? One massive panel. And they all they need is one massive panel on the wall and they split it and they chop it up and they can put picture in picture a million different ways. So even uh, that's drastically changed how we view it. I, I think like we're talking about on site, you know, before maybe there was more of the idea of the broadcast van because I, if I'm going to haul, I don't know, 10 CRTs, well, I may as well have a van. You're halfway there already, probably with the cost of that. But these days, it's like, yeah, put a few LCDs in the cases, stick them down, we're good to go. Yeah, yeah. I had a, I had a, the last, the very last load of uh, BVMs that I got from a television studio in Nashville were from a van. They were vans. They, they'd go through, and this was what they told me when I'd go meet with them. They say every time, um. Now we have like two, they said they, we have only only have like two or three vans left filled with monitors. And I, and so I didn't really understand, but then I actually saw the van and I, when they did the CRT thing, it was insane. They had uh, one van had two BVM D 24s in it. And then, um, it would have two a series is the 14 inch. And mm -hmm. that was the average was at least four monitors like that. And then the second one had two a series a d20 and a d24 and uh the the guy who was the tech was just ecstatic because he realized he was getting rid of so much weight they finally gave him the budget to replace these vans you know monitors and uh he was just excited because he knew you know how much he was going to save in gas and stuff from driving around with these uh how much more weight there was in those i mean if you think about it that's that's like driving around you know three or four hundred extra pounds uh, maybe even more than that. I mean, those more, people, yeah. like it's like 500 pounds of just weight. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot. I think I'm trying to think in the in the the van where I got mine from. The whole back, if the van's long, there was different compartments or the the semi trailer, sorry. Um, and the whole back wall was the main viewing thing. So there was the 20 inch in the middle, and then I think they had I want to say probably at least six 14 inches. So it was 14 inch. 14 inch some 14 inches around the 20 and then more 14 inches so that was sort of just the whole back wall was full of screens and um actually fun fun fact about where i got my screens from uh they're all as i said they're all in the back of a semi-trailer i got some out um i was able to get 
a few of them already. Um, but then that van was used in the movie Tenant, as I understood. I haven't oh. gone through yet. <laughs> but they needed a shitty looking old, could be Russia, you know, that movie um, kind of techno scene. And it was my van. <laughs> I got That's a, awesome. I got a screenshot of that. Because Tenant was shot mostly in, in Tarlin. That's our big thing here that uh, Christopher Nolan came and. Uh, those long stretches where they're driving down a highway and the Saab flips and goes this and goes in reverse and goes back. That's all done on the major Lagner road here. Um, so it was a big thing for us. And I have friends of mine who got a lot of experience by working uh, with the Christopher Nolan team and uh, got a lot of international experience working on Tenant. So yeah, anyone who knows Estonia knows, oh, Tenant, it's our thing. It's all we've got. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love stuff like that. My old uh, Neo Geo machine was in uh, in a movie for like half a second because uh, they were shooting a movie at my old office, and I, I just thought that was the coolest thing. It was a decent movie too. It was like a modern take on Frankenstein. I had no idea about that. Well, what's the name of the movie? Oh man, uh, you know, uh, uh, give me one second, <laughs> yeah, I'll figure it out. But there was a lot of people um, that came through that place that were just assholes. They thought that they were uh, they thought that they were going to be like. Um, you know the next big thing and they treated everybody and there was some creepers too that I'm sure got nailed in the Me Too thing hopefully at least <laughs> and then here's this guy uh, Larry Fessendom I believe it was his name and he'd done a whole bunch of horror movies and he'd you know he'd uh, yeah, like he was you know like B, B level famous sorry Larry I doubt you're listening to this but you know <laughs> and uh, he was the nicest fucking guy he was absolutely awesome he was really cool like, when I needed to get in something one time, he was like, hey, do, you know, we're doing one scene, you know, could you wait, or do you need to get in now? And I'm like, of course I'll wait. Like, it's, you're making a damn movie. I just I just want to be able to, like, you know, get in here at some point. They, they were very, very nice to me. Uh, and when I needed to move in um, uh, an arcade machine, that arcade machine, actually, that's when he was like, hey, man, I don't mean to be uh, weird, but could I use this in my movie? And I'm like, yeah, what do you need to do? As long as you're not, like, smashing it in the movie. He's like, no. He's like, leave it out here if you don't mind. I'll make sure nobody messes with it, and we can just leave it in the corner. I think there's one scene that we needed, like, a prop in the background that would be cool. I'm like, oh, great. It's like, does it work? I'm like, shockingly, yeah, it works great. So the movie was depraved, and it was from 2019. It's a not-rated film, uh, and, yeah, the, okay. the guy, the director and writer... Larry Fessendom, his producer was like, "Don't call it Frankenstein; it's Frankenstein." Sorry, <laughs> but it's um. Well, he yeah, deserves I, I a plug, it. you know. Yeah, it's not the um, it's you know, it's not the world's best movie, but as far as like paying the five bucks on Amazon or whatever, it's free now. Like, I I was thoroughly entertained even without the arcade machine. Just know what you're getting in for. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool nice. story. Yeah, uh, Bob, I had a question for you. Now that we've got you on the line here. So the, what we have not been able to do today is test the composite in uh, because of the can be trick. I think it's still a bit tricky to get from HDMI to composite. Mm. Um, I know we talked a bit about that. I've also found uh, a GBS control that I have or GBSC, the homemade version. And is there some way to get composite out of a GBS control? No. So there's two answers to this. Um, uh, the first way that I was doing it, because I was doing it the way I'm about to explain, because I also needed to test other things. So I was going from RGB, uh, RGBS to RGBHV, just because that's what this device needed, and then I was converting that to composite. Um, then there was also the Ashenworks one that could just take RGB and send that to composite. Colors work, they're off on all of those devices. And, you know, it's a lot of equipment, it's a lot of extra money just to test lag on composite. But I was using it that way forever because, once again, I needed to test a million other things with the same devices. Shank from Shank Mods reminded me that you could just take an HDMI to component video uh, digital to analog converter and use the green. And it'll be black and white, but if you're just testing with a time sleuth, that is the only color that's being displayed anyway, so you're good to go. And I Now, forgot. wait, hold up a second because you, you told me that, uh, Bob, and I, tr and I couldn't get that to work. I couldn't okay. get taking green and then... I will try this again tomorrow. I'm going to have that component set up tomorrow. But uh, to just take green and over composite, and you should see something, at least I something that the green. Time Sleuth can use. I One think it's green. 
try all of them. I think it's green. I could just be half asleep here. Right. But I'm gonna give that um, another. But it could could that possibly have been that you tried it on the OLED in 240p mode, which had to start at 480i and then work in 240p? Look, it could be. I can't remember exactly. Mm. It, it needs a more uh, proper. The, the only test. reason I thought to ask that is because yeah. that shit happens to me all the time, where I'll be testing something and then I'll always, you know, revert back to my team of experts that I bother daily, and one of them will always bring up something like that, where I'm like shit you're right let me go back and do I it think again it was. It probably would if i remember now i remember i just told you 240p didn't work straight up so yeah um that's the probably, other reason why i love so... having the time sleuth uh preset to those resolutions because you could just toggle back and forth between 240p and 4ai pretty easily um, mm. and also with tvs like that the other thing that i've seen especially with those cheap dax is sometimes switching resolutions just confuses everything so, like, if it doesn't work in 240p and you switch it to 480i, it won't work. But if you powered everything down, including un unplug the power from the DAC, plug everything back in in 480i mode, suddenly everything works. Or mm -hmm. it's actually more likely that, that would happen in 480p. So you have a display that can't accept 15 kilohertz at all. And when you switch it between, it still doesn't know what's going on. But power it all off, power it all back on, and now 480p works. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, I'm still working on that. Yeah, I, I had to say, I, I know that I could probably buy something. We've got something like Ashenworks. That, that would be a great product. I'm, I'm always trying to see, like, what can I make from what I've got around here or what I yeah. can buy for, like, 10 bucks or 20 bucks. Maybe 50 is like, oh, I don't want to spend 50 yeah, on big, it. Yeah, big, big props to Shank for that because when he was asking mm. me, he's like, hey, what do you use for composite? And I told him and I told him the thing, and he's like, uh, well, I just been plugging it in the green. Is that bad? And I was like... I'm a moron. That's a great idea. <laughs> well, well, well done, Shane. It's like well going done. around. Yeah, you're you're like, oh my gosh, I tried. I way overthunk this problem, and then it's well, the only way that's, that that's I was good. getting from this. So I know we've got the evil, the evil, evil HDMI to AV. So when I lag test this, it was between twenty and thirty milliseconds. So fine for yeah. watching movies, not good for games, but it could at least. I I did lag test through this device. So or if you want to fudge factor 20 to 30 milliseconds out, because the OLED PVM, when I ran it through this, came out at 90 milliseconds. So Yeah, so that's, that's, what, uh, that's what everybody needs to, to remember with this is, so uh, Lewis is holding up one of those generic HDMI to composite video converters. They're very cheap, and for what they do, I love them. A lot of people end up watching old TV shows from Netflix on their CRT with that. And if the goal is to get to 480i, it's great. And because you're playing on a CRT, that, you know, 30 milliseconds of lag with two frames isn't bad at all. And in fact, if, if the game that you're looking to play fits right in 480i, I would say that's a, a totally fine way to play. It's not the best. The problem with that particular one, HDMI to composite, is that almost every game you're going to want to be playing on a CRT, you would want in progressive scan, not 480i. So that device, believe it or not, it's not the lag that's the problem. It's the fact that like, if you were to do something like take a modern uh, SNES Classic or, or Genesis Mini or something like that, run it through that, all of your Genesis games are now in 480i, which just is terrible, unless you're playing two-player Sonic 2, you know? So it's um that would be like so that's the the processing mm. is the problem with that not the but lag. that would be only if you're going into a, a fancy PVM that does multi format though if we're talking about regular no, because straight it, up it, yeah all composite can't do 480p at all in any scenario mm. so it's only 240p and 480i that, that would happen so if you plug 720p into that like a Genesis Mini or something plug that into your composite TV it's sending it 480i and it's uh, everything's being interlaced. So that's hmm. why, but it's funny to see because when you combine that with a flat panels lag, that's why you got the 90 because it was, you know, everything put together. But right. yeah, so that's, um, you know, the, the other thing you're doing with that is you're normalizing the signal, which is why it's very likely that if you plugged that into your OLED, it would totally work composite 480i. But if you plugged a Sega Genesis into that or something, it wouldn't because it's uh, different timings and stuff like that. Oh, so uh, not right. I was about to ask you what you meant by normalizing, but it would be a very standard composite signal coming out of. Is that sort of what you're saying? Yes, and this is exactly why the OSSC has problems with some capture cards and TVs, because it's regardless of composite S video component RGB, it's still the timings and refresh rate and, and the exact signal isn't 
standardized. All console, consoles are different, but TV signals are all standardized. So you would uh, most likely, in many of these situations, your PlayStation 2 running a standard 480i game would work flawlessly, uh, but you plug in, you know, uh, even Super Nintendo running 480i wouldn't work because it's different timings and it, it, the TV is like, this isn't a TV signal. I don't know what this is. I'm not, I'm not going to try to process it. Interesting. How about it? So yeah. the, right. So the, the Genesis sends out, it's, would you say like its own version of composite, its own take on the matter, which so probably it, worked with CRTs. It's really just the refresh rate and okay. a few other things around that. So it's still composite. It's just, uh, I'm oversimplifying cause I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get it right if I try to go into the exact details, but it, to, to make it easy to understand, it's when people have heard of like the D jitter mods and stuff like that for super Nintendo. What that's actually doing is normalizing the signal to closer to something that you would expect from a TV signal. That's an oversimplification, but it's you know it's the same RGB, it's the same type of sync mostly. It's just you know the way the, the it's being sent down the line is different. And that's why you only need that digital mod if you're playing it on a flat panel. It's nothing that's relevant to to CRTs. To CRTs because CRTs didn't even check to see what the signal was. It just, whatever it accepted, it just shot across the screen with a beam of light. And if you send it the wrong frequency signal, it would just freak out because it wouldn't understand what that is. Yeah, that's why sometimes you can send it in there and it'll still show something if it's not right, if it somehow makes it like an image through there, but that's why it, it will never line up if it's, if it's not compatible with that CRT. And then sometimes, like you say, you know, these, they don't, don't even spit out an image at all like if it's not gonna mm -hmm. catch it um i mean i i don't know last sec like this thing I, I, it does look it doesn't look terrible uh as far as like visually so like you i mean playback again a playback monitor but yeah i mean again you can't that that's just way too much way too much lag in it really unfortunately that's that's gonna be i think that's gonna be like the killer on this it's like mm. that on top of other things but Ultimately, it's always yeah, going to be stuck with that. I think I don't want to settle down to a 50 millisecond lag game of something. I don't know. Like, if I have the option, yeah. nah, I'll be all right. Yeah, not for retro stuff, you know? Mm. No. I wonder, um, Bob, just to keep picking your brain for a second there, our, sure. our little conundrum about how do we go from HDMI to composite. Like, first of all, like, we should care. But we care because we're nerds and the here mm -hmm. is something we don't do. It struck me that that... Is that something that this new combination of the, what is it, the Morph and the Infinity Switch, in theory, could do something like this? Because it's got a HDMI in and a You could do that with the RetroTINK 5X, too. All you would need is an HDMI right. to component video converter. Send it 240, or sorry, send it 480p or 720p, and then let the tink go down. And then from there, you would need... And out of the output, an HDMI yeah. to like VGA converter, and then one of those to composite. And even then, the colors wouldn't quite be right. You would have mm. to use one of the newer things, which I still have a pile of stuff I got to do. A but wait, on. wait, but there's like, a new device that could dial in composite. How would you then go out of the retro tink is outputting HDMI, HDMI outputting... to VGA or HDMI to component, and. The, the easiest right. way at the moment would be HDMI, the exact solution that Steve just showed with the Time Sleuth, into the, like, the Ashenworks converter, uh, and that should get you composite video. However, the colors are going to be off. Same reason right, that you can't do RGB to composite these days. But there is a device. Let me... Um... Right, because it's something about... Like, so this is a Mr. Case from uh, from somebody who I've been working with, and I, I totally fell off. I should have been testing this months ago, and I apologize. But there is a little screw terminal right there above my fat finger that when you uh, output through a Sega Saturn composite video cable, you could use that to dial in composite. So in the context of a Mr., you would want to do something like load up the 240p test suite and the color bars... Uh, and adjust this per core. So if you bought this to play your favorite games off of one core, great. If you bought this to use with every core on composite video, it's going to drive you crazy because you'd need to dial it in. But for what you're talking about, Lewis, that actually, what, especially if you're talking about standardized TV signals, right? Because that's exactly what it would be if you're going from any HDMI device. 
you might be able to do just that. You might be able to load 480p or 720p HDMI, load up a color bar pattern, run that through the tank, through the Ashenworks, or, um, sorry, the, the replacement of that would be a separate device, not the Ashenworks, and you'd be able to dial in exactly for that setup, and it would work. Mm. And if you changed the DAC, if you changed the retro tank, if you changed anything else, you might have to redial it in, but that should work for all 480p HDMI signals. Uh, and I got to contact him because I haven't talked to him in a while, and I fucked up by not getting that review out. But hopefully he can send me, um, or I'll buy off of him the, the other product that's standalone. It's not the Mister; it's just RGB to composite. That's cool. I, right. Now, so I because to, this is well, the, go ahead, Lewis. This the RGB the composite, and again, I know I'm oversimplifying. We're all not the we all understand. We're all not the exact video experts in here. But the, through your help, Bob, and, and talking to others, I'd come to the understanding that because uh, I thought I could just get the Antonio Villena adapter for Mister, which is great. I have no problems with it, by the way. I'm not knocking it here. Um, and you know, I was like, oh, RGB. Uh, well, that's a very good quality. Of course, it can be transcoded down into something of less quality. And then yeah. I understood that's not a reality, and it's something linked to the dot clock inside of the console that it needs that to get that synchronized properly. Yes, and that's why you could dial it in manually and just hope for the best, but um, that's pretty much it. But Antonio's adapter also outputs S-Video, right? Yes, it does. And, yes. and that and should that, be perfect. It's great. Yeah. I love yeah. the adapter. Um, the only the only problem, not really problem with it, is that because of the, the QB design of the mister, it hangs off the side, and you either need to prop it up or do something, but that's not Antonio's fault. That's sort of just a distributed yeah. project thing that it kind of rolls out like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, though, also one thing I'm going to check soon, soon, as soon as I get my time sleuth back off Vlad. Well, it's his time sleuth, but you know, hey. Uh, as soon as I get that back, um, I those DVD recorders, there was like a generation of DVD recorders. Some of them had hard disks in them as well. Mm. And they, I have about three of them, and they all have quite a multitude of inputs and outputs and I know that I was using my one to do SCART, RGB SCART to component and to S-Video just because it's, I don't know, it converts them all internally. So that's something I'm going to investigate also in an upcoming video. What's the lag on that thing? Because um, it's certainly not convenient. You've got to have this big friggin' DVD right. thing. And does it destroy the color space or, or does it do a decent job? Because remember, that? when that stuff was designed for like VCRs, Good luck seeing if the colors were <laughs> off by 10%. But, yeah. you know, a video game with those big solid colors all over the screen, 10% would be huge. So. Mm. so I'm keen to investigate how those things... I think, at least where I am, those devices are still a little bit overpriced. Uh, mm. DVD, any old DVD player is kind of not too expensive. But for some reason... Because they're not, it's not useful. A, a hard disk recorder is not useful to me. A DVD recorder in a unit is not really something i'm using these days so i don't know why they're still attracting i don't know a little bit of a price on them they should definitely be dropping in price which is what caught my attention it's it's because there's no other simple solution to put in a tape put in a dvdr and hit play and record uh mm -hmm. there was a couple of times that i've seen a few things where it was like a vcr that had like it or no, it had composite in, and it had like an uh, SD card slot or something, and it was basically supposed to do the same thing. Uh, but they, it was from like Brookstone, and I'm sure it was terrible. I'm sure it was made with four dollars worth of parts in it. But um, yeah, I, I think nowadays something like one of the Tinks and pass through mode to a capture card that could accept 480i would be a far better solution. Mm -hmm. Just a little more work because you know you got to plan it out, but. You end up with a file, which you could just throw right on YouTube or do whatever you want with. So I think that's a better solution. It's just the average person sees a physical tape, sees a physical DVD, and knows that you could just use both of those. And why would why would somebody who's not a nerd even know that there's other options like that? So. Well, we're on the topic of comp uh, composite video. I, I always had this question come or this idea come up. I, I do run into situations where I'd like to have. Um, a composite like console cable you know uh, the nest the nintendo ones the oem ones they're pretty good uh, but i kind of like run into trouble finding a good high quality sega uh brand of like Ugh. of like composite video cables that i wish i could just find like a heavy duty one 
for example, um, just to, you know, the Insurrection Industries made that S video cable for the Nintendo, and I love that thing. It's just like heavy duty feeling, and uh, I was always like, man, will somebody ever, is there any desire out there beyond just me that somebody would actually go in and make a higher quality, uh, cost a little bit more, but, you know, it's, not, it's still just a composite video cable. I don't know if anybody is interested in I can jumping in that space. I guarantee you the answer. I can guarantee you the answer is that nobody, none of the bigger companies are going to pick up on it because they're just going to go, you can get these on AliExpress for a dollar. I'm not making a $20 version. Uh, it would have to be somebody like Insurrection or custom cables from Retro Access. I'm sure they would do, but I agree. And I, I don't even really need it to be fully shielded. I'm just tired of ones that don't work. I can't yeah. tell you how many Genesis cables I've plugged in, especially when I was doing triple bypass testing, where I'm like, all right, well, let me just grab an audio cable just to hear it, and, oh, man, there's nothing coming out of the right channel. Did I screw this up? You know, like, Jose just did this mod, and it's working perfectly, and then find out it's the cable, throw that in the garbage. Another one keeps dropping signal because the connectors inside the console end are all messed up. Throw that one. I mean, I must have thrown out five of them. And it's not like I could repurpose them for anything because they were all garbage. So it's just, yeah, I just want to not have, it just has to not suck. It's not yeah, really a big what, ass, yeah. right? Can it's make it's something not got to be not performing. a giant piece of garbage. Right. It's yeah. not, it's, I want something that's like a little bit of durable, has that old school monster cable feel, you know, that like you yeah. said, it's, it's made right. You're not going to worry about dropping signal in there. I mean, the ones that I've got for, because I use a Genesis 2 for a lot of stuff if I just want to display. Because I've got tons of TVs here that only do composite. And when mm. you, you know, if you start collecting like TVs, everybody's like RGB mod it. But to me, it's like, what's the point eventually? Why do I want to keep RGB modding every single composite TV that I've got? For me personally, I want to collect them. So I want to have them, you know, just there. But I'd love to be able to just go throw an awesome uh yeah composite video composite cable, with cable. i know it's so a... funny though um i've always i've always and still truly believe that composite into a crt is an awesome experience but ever since i got the 36 inch tv from you <laughs> i have a little addendum to that Ooh. the bigger you go the more you see the interference so a really nice 13 inch sony tv in composite is an amazing experience even up to a 20 probably but when I put Duck Hunt on that 36-inch TV, it's almost as bad as watching on a flat panel because you see all of the interference and very giant, you know, pixels, if you will. So yeah, so yeah, I do love composite. But if you're gonna go through the trouble of doing something like, you know, that beautiful 36-inch, either use an S video or component input or RGB mod it. So because yeah. there are tons of 36-inch TVs that are composite or RF only that I imagine would look beautiful with an RGB mod. Uh, so yes, that if you have a giant TV that you love, take the time. If it's a small one, I agree a hundred percent. Just use composite and enjoy it, and it's going to be awesome. Well, Help it's like with a bit stuff of, like the jail sorry. cell TV I've got. I don't want to really, I don't really want to RGB oh, mod one? that, you know? Or it's, right? Why would you touch it? Right? Right. It's just cool. It's like, oh wow, I've got an RGB modded thirteen inch clear TV instead of just, you know, it's just, it's like some of those are just meant to be. Uh, you know, it's just like preserve them in their kind of current format. And mm -hmm. that's, that's again, when you have the luxury of having already got RGB options. And like, yeah, you definitely, you definitely don't want to use a composite on that 36 inch tube or probably RF. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Sorry, boys. Oh, it's, uh, it's all RGB Scott here in Europe. So I can't hear you over the sound of me just plugging Scott <laughs> in left, right, and center with your composite worries. If the, the French have done, have, oh my God, the French, but they did one thing, which was they mandated this Scott standard, which somehow got around Europe. And thank you, Mr. Frenchman, whoever did that in the 20s or 30s, whenever that was. So I'm, I'm doing here. Hey, I have my question is um, original. Sega video cables like we know it's very easy to identify Nintendo it's got Nintendo on it you could see it you could I don't have I don't think I have only a couple of cables actually have Sega written on them do original Genesis say Sega how do you know I have no clue that's a good question I, I've never paid attention to that but uh, that is something I'd like to see because I was trying to hunt down an original Sega Saturn cable because mine was doing crazy stuff over composite 
and mm-hmm. I was having a hell of a time figuring out which was an original Saturn cable or not. So uh, I gotta, I'll talk to the Shiro guys tomorrow about that. I bet you they would know. But yeah, yeah, that's I'm that's definitely what, an interesting I, one. I have a bunch of those that I've taken from uh, from Japan, from Hard Off, the Hard Off stores, and they've got the junk section with just bins, tubs and tubs full of this stuff, and you just rifle through. And I've, there's a lot of, um, like, there's probably not knockoff cables, which is the nice thing in Japan. It's not like I'm rifling through and it's full of AliExpress and Hyperkin. It's, if there's a cable in there, it's probably actually genuine half the mm. time. And I'm trying to think, I've almost never seen a Sega one. And if I, when I've, I've found plenty of, of uh, Sega Saturn cables in there, but none of them have something written on them. I've usually got to look at the end, look at the... <laughs> manufacture and go like well actually usually it's like oh it's got no one else's name on it uh it seems sturdy enough it's probably genuine yeah that's that's what i've that's what i've seen but i I wish i would find a way to determine those as well just for the same reasons or even better i'd love to see matt from insurrection just make some composite cables for us yeah maybe we'll just bother him i mean to make like 100 200 of them or something (laughs) i don't know how many people but i I I don't know what the minimum order would be though i know i don't problem I don't, I don't really, uh, like, I know I'd buy, like, five of them because I'd want them and never have to deal with it, but I don't know how many other people are like that. I don't know how many other people just want them and, and need them. But I, I've, bought, so I've already there... bought two of his S-Video cables because I just like them and they're convenient for when I need S-Video. So I've already got numerous of those, and I know people yeah. like those. Well, there, there may be another project coming out that might, aim to solve this in a slightly different manner so uh we'll see we'll We'll talk to matt we'll see if this other project comes out but i think um i think we're gonna have more solutions for composite coming up soon good something (laughs) like that's coming out i've got a couple of uh extron small extron boxes that will do they do composite to s video and back again s video into composite um no word on the um, like how, like the issues like the color issues that you have going from RGB. Ooh, that's I haven't. A, that's a, I have not tested this one yet. This is a. Uh, the hell is this? Which model number is it? Uh, VSC five hundred. The five hundred. Yep. Yeah. I have one of those. Okay, so that's um that's the same thing. You could do RGB to composite or S video or or vice versa. I think. No, it's oh, um RGB yeah. in. You could loop, loop, so yeah, loop that through, and then you could make it RGBHV, RGBS, or composite video through it. Um, I want to do a live stream testing this. I got, I got like a live stream a day for the next month to try to get through all this backlog. <laughs> but this is one of the things I want to test. I want to lag test it. I want to color test it. Uh, I got to see if my friend Tech could join me because he has this insane ability to just look at color bars and tell you what's wrong with it. It's it's kind of freaky to be honest with you. He told us one time at an arcade tournament, like, "Oh yeah, green's off by four percent." Everybody's like, "Screw you, four percent!" They put it on a scope and they're like, "Holy shit, it's off by four percent!" So <laughs> yeah, even through a stream, I bet you Tech would be a great person to have on. I just uh, he's got a busy job, so I gotta try to nail him down for that. But yeah, I mean, I, I definitely want to test that. I got. The Mister thing, I wanted. Uh, I got a couple of Mister things I need to test as well. I wanted uh, to test the output on that, um, you know, with a little dial for composite and. Yeah. So what that unit there? It's not. It's in a Mister case, but it's not a Mister. Sorry, or it is. It's an add-on to a regular. A it D10. is. It, it. You put a DE10 in it, just like Mister, just like everything else. It comes with the full kit. Uh, it is. So they have two versions. There's one with the standard VGA. D sub output that you could mm-hmm. use the exact same you would every other case, but that one has a Sega Saturn AV out. So S video works perfect, um, Saturn RGB works perfect, and composite can be dialed in. So once again, you get to dial it per core. But mm-hmm. um, I think people that are only RGB in their setup, they never would use component or VGA, or people that need S video. That is the case to buy. I'll, I'll leave a link for you for that one too, so you could leave it in the notes if people want to know. But yeah, I'd um, love to. Something I would like, actually. Yeah, and, you know, I, I talked to the creator. Um, I, I did talk to him on a regular basis. Now I feel like an ass because I just pulled up, the, uh, I just pulled up the, the chat with him, and I realized I haven't talked to him in months, but i got to catch back up. But I love those cases. And uh, he listens to feedback really well, like even tiny, tiny things. Like I just said, hey, could you put some better feet on the bottom? And the next one that he sent me 
these things are awesome. Excellent. Like it, it's absolutely perfect. So yeah, it's uh, it was been great working with them. And the only reason I fell off is just because, you know, life's insane between the move and, and all the other crap that was going on. But I'm trying to get back on, uh, get back on the horse. <laughs> and, uh, you are, Bob. We can it, see, we can see things are kicking off in retro IGB. Got to get really off the horse and back on it is probably your buddy <laughs> Boltar would say, I know. <laughs> That's exactly what he would say. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, I, I want to try to catch up with all of this stuff. I just gotta, you know, it's hard to keep the wheels moving because more stuff's always coming in and, you know, there's people relying on me to, to test their stuff so they can get the project out. I still have the analog pocket and I haven't even opened the box yet. It's not mine. Luckily, it's a, a friend of mine's that said, take your time with it. So, hopefully Oh, yeah, I remember you saying that. I, did, I didn't even think about it. I was like, it's almost everybody's coming up with something new to either love or, or gripe about the pocket right now, it seems like. And I don't know. It seems I mean, like I feel like some analogs fault. Well, yeah, you know, if you if you design your marketing to piss people off, that is that is the crowd that you're creating around your products. So it's just like, you know, it's like when a, like you go into the comments of, of either of your videos on Zez Retro or on, you know, Retro Tech, and it's just a bunch of, I mean, this obviously with love and respect, but it's a bunch of nerds talking nerd stuff with a couple of trolls. But you go to a drama channel, and they're all just a bunch of pieces of shit because that's the community that they've created. And it's the same thing. <laughs> Analog wants to use some, some creative marketing tactics. That's the crowd that they're going to draw to comment on their posts. So, you know, and it, in their defense, that's the, they've been brilliant at marketing since day one, but you know, all the backlash is their own. I don't feel bad about it. I wonder, it like, how no, there's and... levels of... Because it's not just being being a dick and not being a dick. Like, there are levels of aggressiveness, levels of out-there-ness that you can have. And Analog do seem to go pretty far with it. It's like, do you have to go so far? Pull it back a bit. You're selling enough. It's fine. Yeah. They're selling out in a moment. Do you need to, to go so hard with it? What... Yeah, I mean, it's just level-headed people know the answers. They're like, yeah, it's a beta. You know, the product is just out of beta to the public. There's going to be firmware updates. There's probably going to be something that, you know, isn't as perfect. Uh, and those are the type of criticisms that are totally fair. It's just the people that are like, fuck analog. They should refund everybody's money because the dock sometimes makes a clicking sound. It's like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. But they have attracted that kind of people just to follow them around. Every time they drop a product, yeah. they're going to be there, uh, you know, giving them giving them grief about it and that's kind of like you say you know you get you get the good and the bad when you're in a business and you go down that route road i was just blown away that um uh, cricks would be like all right and just spend i mean what seems to be a lot of time trying to figure out this problem and i understand he's got products out there that he's concerned about and I, I don't know he's been uh one of the people that i've been uh obviously impressed with as my length in the scene of somebody who continues to service products i mean this the rom card i'm using is like six years old on this thing and it works fine still still. Updates. <laughs> and, and he's like yeah he'll he will still put out updates on a, his forums for these things it blows me away and then he's like way out there already oh i've already tested this in scopes mm. here's the probably the problem I, I don't want to speak for Cricks, but I get the impression that him testing the analog stuff and, and putting those tweets out was his polite way of being like, you think you're so smart, motherfucker? Look at this, <laughs> Ukraine bitch! Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's like, you know, his polite attitude of it, which I love, by the way. I think that's well, look, absolutely awesome. Well, let's not awesome. forget, I, I don't want to, we're not going to get too political, but there's pretty much a war going on in Ukraine right now, okay? There's some dudes, yeah. little green men in tanks who want to come over the borders, and there's a lot of shit going down in Ukraine. And he's still sitting there going, don't care about that. I'm still going to listen to some <laughs> fucking troll on the internet. <laughs> really? Oh, your thing doesn't work properly exactly uh. right. I got a fucking Russian tank out the back. Okay, yeah. that's what we're dealing with in the Ukraine. So I, I maybe he's got a... I only hope Crix has some... Of enlightened perspective on the world due to his experience. Yeah, analog trolls, trolls are the worst. Matter. There has not been every time I speak about the product and don't suck the metaphorical D, or every time I just don't <laughs> talk about it because it's not relevant this week. I get hate mail like, D "I heard you on the retro roundtable say that, that you wanted a free one and they didn't give it to you. The only reason you hate them is because you don't get free ones." That's I never said that. I've bought every analog product anyway. And I don't understand, Chris Tabor doesn't love you, and he will never love you, so there's no reason for you to get all emotional about this. I didn't just, like, insult your girlfriend, 
I, it, it's the weirdest thing in the world. I Maybe have it no, is for them. Maybe. I, I have <laughs> no idea where it enough. comes from. It's baffling, and I love pushing their buttons now. Because it's just, if I'm going to eat shit for it anyway, I'm going to make myself laugh. Right. <laughs> well, and you're bringing up the, you know, the fanboy thing. It's like people, again, it's like analog their method of marketing it's almost like they could spit on these guys and they you know the <laughs> fanboys and they'd be okay with it because they're like i'm all in i bought the first one i've got every single product analogs made and i'm like on every pre-order and there's it's it's i mean there really is i guarantee you there's a segment of their market that is like that right there's there's yeah. definitely the people that are like i'm and every time you know that's their thing every time analog has a new thing out They'll go and defend them, even like you say, if somebody doesn't care. It's just like, yeah, the company doesn't really, you know. Yeah, it there was like a they should have an about... fans. Yeah, right. Where they just talk to people like, oh, fuck you guys. And they're like, oh, yes, analog. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> and you can tip them. Why not? Why cut out the middleman? We don't need analog pocket. We just need analog. Uh, oh, there was a whole conspiracy here. thread about why I haven't covered the analog OS. Because it doesn't exist. I'm not covering an announcement for a pre-order for a product for a like. No, when it comes out, of course it's important and people want to hear about it. But no, I'm not. I'm not being manipulated into doing their viral marketing for them. All of the other tech blogs seem to do it. I don't know if they're getting paid or what their deal is, but yeah. And it, it was also funny to see that spill over onto Retrobit because they were like, "Buy our shitty clone console. No emulation here." And I, I called them out on Twitter. I was like, "Don't." Don't do that. You can't. No wonder those guys hate me. And it's just, but you know, they they were they were like, sorry, you know, you're right, whatever. But uh, yeah, that's oh, uh, retro bit. We're calling. We're talking shit. Talking smack about retro bit was like, it. here's our. Clo Actually, I bought it just to, just to show them. Don't be assholes. Uh, they were <laughs> marketing this thing as yeah, oh. not emulation, and it's like oh, what? <laughs> no, okay, no, right. no, no, no. You That's... just got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. You are getting slapped have, on the wrist. We have for more that. chance of getting analog on OnlyFans than we do of that being not emulation. Go ahead. Yeah, but by the way, this actually is probably one of the least worst I've tested. It's not great, but it, it, compared to some of the other ones out there, it's not awful. I just, I, I wish, you know, I, I'll get to this too. I'll have a video about how to test these types of consoles, but um, mm. I, I just wish these people would be more honest. Like, hey, do you have a collection of NES, Genesis, and Super Nintendo games that you just want to play on your TV? There's a bunch of really awesome options out there, but you're going to drop some coin. So if you just want it to work, start with this and then check out our other library afterwards. Like, that kind of humble marketing would probably sell a ton, and you're not going to end up with angry people going, why does this sound sound like I just lost my hearing in my ears? Like, what the hell? What is wrong with it? Like, so, yeah, I don't know. But that's, so I guess well, why I'm a nerd and, and not in marketing. Yeah, in the, in the company perspective, then you're like, well, we set this up, you understand. There's plenty of examples where people have tiers of products and successfully do that and then when there's a problem they're like look that's that's part of this you know so you save the money if you get you can't get the highest you know you never could get the highest quality and uh yeah. the best and the best price that's impossible in any business that i've ever worked in that was a big i worked in sales for a decade and they were always mm -hmm. like oh well you can eat you can choose two of these you know you want the best product the best price or the best service you can choose two yeah. you don't get to choose three so that's fair and that's right. And if you're saying that from up front, you know, you're kind of um, but what, but then, you know, you were speaking to how a lot of us nerds who've seen analog come out with products and we're understanding the way this goes. And there will eventually probably be firmware updates to fix a lot of these things. Analog does the opposite. You know, it's more like the Neo Geo kind of marketing where it was just like, pow, hit you. Not a lot of details, dark and edgy here it comes, be ready, and that's kind of it, lacking on a lot of those, um, you know, details that, hey, this will have a firmware update to fix all the problems that you're going to find. I don't know, you know? And it's listen, not, you're not going to find that. Props to their marketing. They've sold a shitload of these things as a result. Uh, you know, don't don't hate the player, hate the game type of thing, but, you know, if that's the marketing you choose, that's the, you know, that's the shit that's going to be flung back your way. It's kind of funny to see these companies... I, I'm not talking about analog. I'm talking about just all of these bigger retro gaming companies in general. Absolutely hate my guts, and it's so funny to see because like I actually am very fair 
when it comes to these. I praise all of the good stuff that they do. And they never, they used to just pretend I didn't exist. And I think somebody, especially, I'm thinking about one company in particular was like, uh, I think somebody said to them, like, you should check your analytics and see how many products of yours was sold through RetroRGB.com. And then suddenly I'm getting responses to my tweets and emails. And it's like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Just because I don't say everything you do is amazing doesn't mean I don't really love a lot of your other products. So, you know. But no, most of them just like, they like the shills. They don't like anybody that questions them. They want the person that holds up the box, does the unboxing, talks about how great it is and feels good in the hand. Like, they do not want questions asked most of these places. Some love it, though. Some, you know, some come right back and, and just absolutely love the other perspective. And they don't always change, but that's fine. That's cool. Yeah, what I enjoy about your coverage, Bob, because, like, for example, I'm confused about Retrobit, and I think it's because you don't send one message. It's not good, 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 great, 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 or bad, bad, bad. You're like, well, this unit is not so good. This unit is all right. Because yeah. as I've understood from this uh, Hyperkin incident, the Retrobit uh, GC video solution that you are referencing apparently is quite fine and quite great. okay and pretty regular. Right, so it, they're not... It's the best one on the market now only because it's got that USB port to update. Um, the insurrection's awesome, but it's not in stock. Otherwise, I would have been pimping that one too. But yeah, yeah. that one, their wired Genesis and Saturn controllers are awesome. They are comfortable. Mm -hmm. Some people have complained. I have never had an issue with the wired ones. I use them all the time on Mr. Um, their cartridge releases, they, are, they really took that criticism to heart about, uh, that we gave to the whole industry about don't sell shitty cartridges, especially if you're selling limited editions that you're charging a lot for. And they really ran with that. Their stuff has been awesome. The right voltage, mm. properly chamfer chamfered and beveled edges. Like, they, they've really done their diligence on that one. They have so many good things. But, you know, and I even think there's absolutely a place for this. And I don't think mm. it's just one of those, like, this is garbage, should be thrown out. There's a place for it, 100%. It's just, you know, some of the, some of the stuff that they've been involved in, I just hope that they would tweak a little bit more and, you know. Just kind of, like a lot of their wireless controllers are very laggy. Very, very laggy. So, you know, those, there's room for improvement. Those, the, uh, the, the clone console thing, though, is a very difficult one because it's kind of like when you go on and you're trying to find a topic or you want to find some specific thing on a broad, I mean, it, there's just so many different ones of it. It's hard a lot of times when you're going out even to just differentiate which one is which, which marketing goes with which product. Um, there's just been so many reiterations about those. So there are a lot of times where I don't know me, it's just like, I've always said, Oh, well, they're all just junk. Right. Cause I don't really like they any were of them, for but a that's, long time. and they were. And so now it's, it's like, there's so, but there's been such a saturation in that market of that product. It's hard to kind of switch the mentality of what the, you know, perception is of it. If, if it really is yeah. something good. And that's good on you that you, you know, you're in, you're actually like individually tested these things and given feedback on that specific one and not just regurgitating something where you're like, I don't really think this is going to be good kind of. I mean, I've definitely been guilty of that, but the, the, the problem is when I started retro RGB, you could get, you know, a, an NES, a Genesis and a Super Nintendo um, that performs infinitely better than this and they, they used to only have composite out and the other ones you know you could use s video on nes or on snes and stuff like that or even rgb so in the context of 10 years ago like you know just get the original consoles but now it's like if you're playing over composite video might still actually be beneficial to just get the original consoles you know just a lot of other things you don't have to worry about but the moment you start throwing hdmi in there so now this is like 80 bucks or something. And, you know, it's not great. It's just, it's not trash either. So that 80 bucks for three consoles worth of original cartridges, and I haven't tested the lag yet. That's the thing I got to, I, I don't think it's, it's horrendous, but I don't think it's great either. But, um, but I mean that to do that now with original consoles or analog consoles, you're talking three times the price. So yeah. The market's yeah. really gone crazy on this this stuff anymore, and and is not that, to mention yeah. like we're getting up onto these age of these things where you said within the last year you brought up the point that people are starting to discover that the surface mount caps and things and stuff and, and even Super Nintendos and um, anything yeah. all that stuff's wearing out now, and we're at the lifespan where you really shouldn't be expecting those caps to really last much longer. 
So you got to now you got to start taking into account, you know, this is this, that's really becoming um, a deci- deciding factor to add in a price, even if you get a, a, a you know, original console. Mm hmm. You're saying is it, uh, sorry, yeah, when you were you, you were sort of saying, well, uh, um, this r- uh, retro bit console is good. It's got a Super Nintendo. It's got a Genesis. It's got some NES hanging off. I the didn't front say there. good. I said not trash. Oh, good. Yeah, not, <laughs> not trash. Fine, not trash. But um, who? Okay, as we move forward in time, not only are caps dying and and original consoles dying off, but who's left? That's like, hey, I'm a dude at home. I or dude at I'm, I'm sitting at home. I don't know much. I, I need, but I've got all these cartridges here that I just haven't played. Where do I find? Who who is this? Who's <laughs> digging out? Is it ha- is so much happen? more common than thing? you would expect? It's so much more common oh, than you would okay. expect. It's it's something like people who've hung on to their old consoles want to share it with their kids, uh, you know, or the kids and their family, nieces, nephews, neighbors, whatever else. Uh, people, there are people out there that you know they they might get into the Mister and they might get into other stuff, but there's just something different. You know, that's, I, I always use the analogy of the moment you get past level one in the game, nostalgia doesn't mean shit. It's either a good game or a bad game, <laughs> period. But there is also that aspect of like what it feels like to pick up a cartridge and, uh, you know, and to, to, to hear that click and to turn on your NES four times because maybe you're going to get the blinking light in the front, of, you know, and there's just something about that that means a lot to some people. And it's even being passed down now where people's kids are showing, you know, their kids like, hey, look at what my grandfather used to do with the Atari 2600. You know, it's like, it's, it, I can totally understand that. Right. But it's not for gamers as much as that is for the experience overall, right? Like you mm-hmm. get into Tesla, you slam on that gas and you're pinned in the seat and you are just going as fast as possible. But it is not the same experience as getting in like handlebar gamers and Paula and you know you pump the gas three times and you you turn the thing and blah, 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 blah. that is a totally different experience Tesla's faster but it's not it's not the same no yeah sure that real <laughs> experience that that genuine well for lack of a better term for genuine hardware uh, I yeah. think I'd rather have the, the weird thing well as long as I've got something that'll still get me to to work or whatever on the cold day I'd rather I'll have the other yeah maybe the analogy is okay the PS4 is there if I need to play something double A, it's there, no problems. But I think I'll like every time I turn something on here, it doesn't work. I gotta smack it or I gotta do something to it. And it's as much as I get frustrated, then you remember like, oh no, this is the game. This is what we do. Yeah. Right. All That's this why crap. you're doing my, that, right? My VCR so. is sitting there. It does not work right now. The power I know the power supply is bad on it. It's up and down. It is what it is. I'll just fix the power supply eventually. It's part of the fun. It's funny. Used to we used to get it. I used to get into this stuff because you could be like kind of cheap, and you know, oh, well, I can just go buy a bunch of broken stuff and fix it. And so the matter, the I mean, we've become like such a bigger market in the last couple of years where it's it's even broken stuff's not cheap anymore. It's it's expensive to buy things as parts, and then they generally have already had every. They've already generally had a good number of smart people look at them that couldn't figure yeah. out what was wrong with it. So now you're really trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, it's, it, you know, I can understand that even if you had a game collection and then you're like, oh, my, my, this happened to me. My son, he gets to be where he wants to play a video game. I don't want him to be like, oh, well, here's a PlayStation 5, figure out a game. It's more like, hey, here's something a little more simplistic. Nintendo, two buttons and and if they catch on to that pretty quick and so you and then that gets that nostalgia feel not even if you're not playing it so there is always going to be that because because mm. you're like well i have my collection but i don't have a cheap easy way to get it on the flat screen and like you said mm. an 80 dollar box to just throw with the collection for the kids to mess around with and that if that's what starts you down the rabbit hole or if that's as far as you go, then um, there's a place for it now. And I think we're in a great position in retro gaming where we have at least I mean, it's getting more costly, but at least there are a lot of alternatives to what there was when you started our retro RGB. And we're just like looking into this stuff, how much it's really progressed since then. Yeah, I do love the alternatives. I just really wish that, um, you know, not to call out Ron here, but. I do wish the retro bits of the world would just give me a call because it's like there's it's and it's not even that I'm the smart one. I just have a whole bunch of really smart friends that have taught me all this stuff that I would love to take all of that. Just just like retro RGB, be the middleman and take all of that info I've learned and go, here you go. Just fix these like four things. 
and it's going to add like eight dollars cost which translates to like 20 at the end but like we'll all pimp them for you because they're not going to suck anymore like i'd love to just <laughs> have that conversation and uh you know nobody wants to hear it so i've reached out to hyperkin before i don't i don't think retrobit likes me at all so uh, i'll try reaching out again but i've had you, i've had more courteous responses with hyperkin to be honest Actually, no, what... I shouldn't say that. Hyperkin has always been very, very nice to me, shockingly. Yeah, enough, really? So. Yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand. Uh, so, like, from the insider scene, you are, like, the heartbeat or, you know, the godfather of this whole scene. And it's, like, the whole idea of um, anybody who's in here knows that you're connected with, you know, more smart minds than... I mean, I'm just saying from like think, our level. Think about I'm not it, talking about the about comp- companies. Yeah, you got to think about it from the owner of the company, though, right? Like they they'll send one of these out for free to like 20 people that'll go, oh, look at this, it's great design. The plastic feels good. Oh, it has flaps just like the original. This is amazing. My affiliate code's right underneath. This is I love Retrobit. And they they you know then I go buy one. Or actually, this one was shipped by Monty. Thank you, Monty. But like I go pick up one of these and I'm like. um, Okay, it's got nice plastic, but who gives a shit? So here's everything wrong with it. And now they're like, fuck this guy again. Come on. Right. Like, what the hell? Like, you know, <laughs> I couldn't your imagine damn being science on... and your measurements. <laughs> One of Bob's therapy sessions. Oh, this co- oh, they hate me. Oh, they hate me. Oh, they don't want to talk to me. Oh, and then I said shit about them and they don't like me either. I can see this therapist writing down notes. Oh, really? That person yeah. doesn't want to talk to you either, Bob. Oh, that person also. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I think it's funny to be honest. It's not something that bothers me. I mean, sometimes it does. There was one company that I, I made a, an insane amount of money just through my own clicks, and they like threw me off their booth at a trade show because they just didn't like the way I talked about their their product. But that stuff gets to me because it's like, you know, you fat fuck. By the way, I'm a million pounds, so I'm allowed to make fat jokes. But like, you know, you fat fuck. What are you talking to me that way for? Like, why don't you go check your analytics and then take a deep breath and apologize? But no, the stuff like that, I completely understand, right? Because what are they going to do? Just like discontinue an entire product line that's already in production because I found I did better QC than they did. Like I, I completely get it. I totally understand. I think it's hysterical most of the time, but it it just it's extra funny when other companies are like, hey, "That was a pretty good review." Um, you know what else did you find wrong with it? Like you know, there's been a lot of companies that have been reached out and been like, you know, very nice and gracious. So it's just it, it nice. makes it even nice funnier thing, when I get shit on. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I noticed I noticed you got a uh, which this is I thought it was really cool. I saw um, and I'll give you some free press here, and I don't know if it helps, but I, I liked how you had uh, talked about in this week's uh, news that you had found a good uh, sponsor that wanted to work with the industry in the PCB manufacturer, and uh, and yeah. I don't I don't remember the name of the company, but I think it's pre- you could say it. It's pretty that's pretty awesome. I think that they're so I we should not say the names of anybody involved for for protection reasons here. But um, so what happened was a company talked to me about doing a sponsorship and then they were like they sent me their contract. And in the contract, it was you can't ever show any competition, even on the same video that you're talking about. And if you violate this contract, you get fined a thousand dollars. And I was like, listen, um, my entire business is built off of promoting everybody in retro gaming. You do realize that like, if I show somebody like Laser Bear on screen, uh, they're probably, you could look at them as a competitor because Greg makes 3D printed stuff, but you're a massive company. That's not competition, that's your customer. And if they start getting huge orders, that's your partner. And they're like, no, so you can't show it then. So you would have to not be able to show that in your podcast. And I was like, do you, do you not understand what's going on here? You know, the volumes we're talking about versus your volumes, like these, this is your core audience here. And like, uh, and then they, they said without saying like one of those, like wink, wink, nudge, nudge, just do it. And we won't bust your balls about it. And I'm like, nah, that's not how I work. No I'm way, signing a buddy. contract. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a, you know. No, Take it so out of the I was fucking just like, contract then. <laughs> yeah, I was like, here's my, uh, you know, here's my PayPal. Pay me for the one ad I did for you, and don't ever talk to me again. I was po- more polite than that, but that was the mm-hmm. the thing. So then I reached out to other company, and I was like, hey, your uh, competition just fucking shoved their middle finger up in all of our faces. You want to do it right back? And they didn't respond. And then I messaged them again a couple of weeks later, 
um, slightly more polite, and they were like, "Hell yeah, we'll work with you." And that's when <laughs> I did the ad, and and in that ad, I basically I was like, "I want you to listen to this one because it's not they're all only going to be thirty seconds going forward, but this is the message that I wanted to send to you and to the people listening about the whole we're partners, we're customers, and they're like, we love it." So I don't want to say anybody's name because, you know, that that's one that's one ad that, you know, a year from now, if they if they keep their word and they pay me for doing this, then I would I would absolutely love to pimp them. But, you know, okay. just in, so that, in that's not an ongoing for, sponsorship. That was a once off you did this week. It should was be it? an ongoing. Oh, OK. As you know, so that far, was the sure, first one. Like, yeah. So we'll see. So, so if anybody's listening to this and they've heard the same ad three weeks in a row, that means everything's going great. And they're, they've become the partner that I'm looking for. But I don't. Like, I don't want to do anything that has to do with technology. I don't just want to be like, this company sponsored me, so I'm reading the thing. Like, if it has to do with, with the stuff that we talk about, I'm looking for partners, people that I could pimp the stuff that I love about them, not not read off. Like, I haven't read off a sheet. That All of those were just me talking the truth, right? And, of course, you know, if something not even at all related to gaming comes out, I'll totally pimp out a Casper mattress. Just lay next to it with cuddling a CRT. <laughs> Just like, do you want a yeah. zero lag bed experience? Come here for like, as long as it has nothing to do with the stuff that I absolutely, you know, that's the core audience. Like a beer sponsor. Do you want to feel like the prettiest boy in a retro gaming? <laughs> like, you know, just I, I would, whatever, whatever it takes. Probably shouldn't have said boy and alcohol in the same same sentence, but you know yeah. what I mean. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sense. you gotta no, know. That, 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 that's that's I, I I that's what I was trying to tell you. I appreciate it because it makes you know you're coming, you're taking, you're you're not going to take the advertisement from again somebody who does revolve in our industry that is like again you're, you're talking about beer, big deal. Who cares if what kind of beer you like or right. you don't drink beer? That has you're nothing to do. You're just shilling beer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like yeah, beer. Right. So. <laughs> And it could be anything kind of like that. But again, when it's something directly related to the industry, and then like you said, the first offering that you have where it's almost like I would have to take, it's a choice then you're faced with behind the scenes no one knows about, to a choice to be, well, do I go sell for this bigger company and basically screw over a handful of kind of people that are going to, you know, that I can't almost talk about just to get this one deal and you can't, I'd rather quit. Yeah. Right, and so that's 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 the great thing uh, that we know. Yeah, you know, the Godfather here at the top of the family is doing the right thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying my absolute best. I got to keep the bills paid. And I that wasn't bullshit that I said the other week. The stuff that I'm trying to do behind the scenes, um, if it's a success, of, you know, everybody who's a hardworking creator maker whatever in retro gaming is going to love what happens this year. If it's a massive fail, I'm the only one that's going to take a hit. So uh, the word, you know, everybody else might be like, ah, I guess that flopped like a wet towel, huh, Bob? And I, I'll, I'd be the one that took the rest of the hit on that. But I'm really pushing for it. I, I really it want it to It doesn't matter because you try. Just fucking try. It's good that you are making these changes. The what, what are you going to do? Sit around? Yeah. You, know, you like, can't oh, call up your anything. mortgage company and be like, but I tried real hard. So, you know, <laughs> that that's works, why I right? need more, more sponsors. So, yeah. yeah. You know, there's, there's always a need for, but, um, yeah, it's just good, you know. It's always great to have somebody that's that that uh, has the interest of the entire community, you know. I'm, I'm trying, and I and want to I do know. a lot more shit like this. I like both of you guys a lot. Uh, this is a fun podcast. I also love that I now don't have to edit it. Do yeah, you don't have to do work. anything else. It comes. I'm good. Just, I get just to just get go take a shower, eat lunch, and back in the mail. That's the it. Next one. Yeah, yeah, that's uh so yeah, I hope to be doing a hell of a lot more stuff like this with you guys and with everybody else too, because it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Ugh, ah, sorry, getting a little leg cramp here. I was gonna oh, say yeah, we, we should probably let Bob go, and uh, this is like twice as long as our normal podcasts are almost anyway, right? We're up yeah. to uh, hour sorry, forty. Sorry, I tend to ramble sometimes. No, no, it's, it's great, Bob. Hey, it's awesome. We love it. Yeah. All right. Well, guys. thanks for having well, me yeah. on. This was a blast. Thanks I'm sorry I look like a train wreck. I swear this wasn't a hangover. If it is, I would have had a great story to tell or a dumb story, but I really just didn't sleep last night. So uh, well, trying to trying to snap back into it because I got to record a video and then I have a live stream again tonight as well. So this is going to be a big one. Gonna load up my <laughs> yeah, it's the I keep firing wait, it away. Tonight's the uh, isn't tonight we're getting uh, the Thunder and Philip Paradise CDI Thunder right? and Paradise. So if you oh, watch yeah. this when it comes out, it's go back CDI? and check what? it out. The Thunder in Paradise replay. I'll be watching that tonight. Nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be, be hitting it. 
So this one's <laughs> going to be out next Monday. Okay, so a few days away. So we would have seen Bob's. We would have seen these live streams up by the time this is all going up. This will all go Monday. Yeah. Sorry, we would have like cool. pitched a bunch of stuff about like who Bob was, but literally there might be one person that watches this <laughs> who doesn't know who Bob is, and it's like one of my relatives that like follows me around. <laughs> and it's like, oh, Steve's on the internet. <laughs> That's it. So. Well. Uh, thank you guys yeah thanks again for coming we definitely will uh you know we'll extend the invite back to you uh obviously anytime and uh we'll keep on man and we'll uh we're here to help with anything we can and we appreciate you lewis anything? absolutely and i will send All right, you yeah, a bag of stuff too lewis so maybe we'll do this again with the opposite where you're the one you know twisting the knobs and uh yeah you know, well, well actually my next video is that, that weird that weird yeah. transmitter. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Tomorrow, tomorrow. That's my job tomorrow. Is to <laughs> can it? Does it work? Does it change the signal? And can you put component down the three lines instead of audio? Is it encoding it the same way? Right. Interesting. We will see. This oh, box boy. of shame. Good thing you're out uh, in the middle of nowhere of Estonia, so nothing can interfere with your signals. Right. Yeah, yeah that's true. Somewhere. I have very good. Very. I live also in the countryside of Estonia. Bo so Bob, if you're back in the city, I mean, who knows where that signal will be going and what you'd be picking oh up on the God. other end? NSA. <laughs> do, 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 do. He's SOS. Right. He's picking up some Japanese signal from World War Two. Who knows how it got there? <laughs> oh. um, all right, Bob, stay on the line. Uh, just a few minutes. When I'll click stop, but stay on the line. It keeps the upload going. So don't. Otherwise, we'll do that. But thank you, everyone. For a great episode. Thanks for Bob for being on. Steve, always enjoy your company. See you next time. Adios.